Off-camera flash is a very, very useful tool if you're doing portrait photography. It can give you amazing result, but if you're not careful, it can also easily ruin your photo. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the ugly, flashy look. Actually, there are many people struggling with this. I mean, they did their homework, they used a large soft light, and they know they need to keep it subtle, but they just can't get that natural look. In this video, I'm gonna show you the secret to get a natural look with off-camera flash. First, fitting the shadow the right way. Fitting shadow is probably the most common use of off-camera flash. Um, a typical situation will be um, backlighting situation. So uh, in order to properly expose the ambient, you end up make your subject look too dark. So what we're gonna do, we add flash to fill the shadow. But let me ask you a question. How much exactly shadow that we need to fill? And shall we leave some shadows? You probably know the answer is yes. And then how much shadow shall we leave? Let me show you by doing a little demonstration. Let me introduce our model, Sophie. Uh, Sophie is a super reliable model. Uh, she can hold her pose very long and she talking about the perfect model. Uh, Sophie is uh, 12 inches tall and the lighting I'm going to use is a little LED light. It's about like two and a half by two and a half inches uh, square light. So in the real world scenario, it's just probably around between 24 to 30 inches softbox. So just give you an idea. So let's just uh, mimic this um, uh, typical backlighting situation. As you can see, uh, Sophie's face is very dark. We need to uh, add a flash. Uh, the most straightforward way, the most effective way to fill the shadow is pointing the light directly at the shadow. And then you can see this, the light will fill 100% of the shadow and then it gets the job done. But there's one problem. The image look too flat. What do I mean by flat? In order to define the form of everything. We need three, uh, basically three tones, and then in the drawing they call it value. So basically, you're gonna need a highlight, you're gonna need a mid tone, and you're gonna need a shadow. So with these three values, three tone, you can define the form. But when we put the light this way, what gonna happen? Like, it's like it kills the shadow. So without the shadow, no shadow, no form. So as you can see, once we start moving the light slowly from one side to the other and the shadows start slowly showing up and the more we move the light to the side the more shadow it will be what happens is once we move the light to the side so that your light start working as two functions and not just simply filling the shadow anymore what it does is like it also add a contrast it also helped build a form so you can see their shadow and their mid-tone and their highlight once we start moving the light to the side, you can see the more we move the light to the side, the more shadow there will be. Till we get to a point, the shadow just took everything and then we don't have mid-tone anymore. That's when the light works maximum as building the contrast. It's almost like creating a, a noir comic, right? But the thing is, the light is not functioning as a filling the shadow anymore, which is defeat the original purpose, which we need to fill the shadow. So in general, what we need to do is we need to put our light at a certain position so it fills only a reasonable amount of shadow. At the meantime, it maintains the reasonable amount of contrast. Well, this is, sounds pretty simple, right? It should be something pretty easy to do. So as long as we do this, then we got natural look. Well, in order to get a natural look, we gonna need some more than that. That leads to the second point that I'm gonna cover in this video. Position your light in the right way. Your light need to be come from a direction that makes sense. For example, you have this killer studio lighting setup. Like you always get amazing shots from your studio and then you think, okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move my studio setup, exactly the same setup, outdoor, and then I'll get a killer shot outdoor as well. Well, you probably will be disappointed. Uh, let me explain to you why. Studio is a very different lighting condition from outdoor. So if you just move your studio setup outdoor, you basically completely ignoring the ambient light. 
So what could happen is the lighting fall on your subject look very different from the lighting fall on the background. So it looks like your subject and the background are coming from two different worlds. It end up gonna look like you just took the photo from your studio and then you just replace the background. It looks like a composite image. So of course, it's not gonna look natural. Okay, let's go through some sample images. Okay, first sample image. So was, uh, where's the ambient? So the sun's actually coming from around this angle, 45 degree down. So that's where the sunlight coming from. So actually, she's over somewhere quite dark, uh, quite dark and there's definitely not enough light on her face. And so we definitely need to uh, use our uh, flash to feel the shadow. But how are we gonna do that? So look at the, the sunlight, the sun is coming down and then there's some logs and rock here. So we can totally make it look like uh, there's enough bounce light from the sun down to the ground and up to her. Of course, uh, in the real world, there's not enough uh, light. The light is not strong enough to uh, feel the shadow. So what we what I did is I add a salt box. It's actually it's a beauty dish just underneath here. And then I shoot, I point the light up to make it look like this is actually um, the reflected light back to her face. So this is the first example. You just uh, uh, combine your artificial light uh, with the ambient light and then you make it look like it's a part of the ambient light. So this is a second example. The sun is setting is at a very, very low angle. So you can see all these uh, reflections on the log and then the sand, the rim light on her face, over her body is all from the sun. Uh, because the sun is a quite low angle and then um, her face is uh, pretty much over the shadow part. We need to do the same thing. We need to uh, feel the shadow. So what I did is I put a salt box above her. So what I'm trying to do is I make it look like um, the sun is the setting, but it's uh, still enough light uh, lighting up the sky. So there's enough like a bounce light from the sky down to her. Doing this way, I basically just um, enhance the transition between the highlight and the shadow. This photo, if we shoot uh, natural light, the mid-tone gonna be very, very minimal. Pretty much just the highlight and the shadow because uh, it's a very high contrasty backlight setting. So I just used my saw box to add the mid-tone back. Next example, so sun is coming from this angle. And so um, the ambient light is quite dark because like there's a, I remember there's a very tall tree just right somewhere over here and then in front of her, just basically rock and logs and stuff like that. It's quite a messy place. What I end up deciding is I decided to put my light somewhere over camera right. And then it's a two little light. It's a one beauty dish on top. And then there's a small square soft box at the bottom. So I'm pointing the light this way. So I end up making it look like this almost like a, uh, like this is near a cave or something. And then there's a big opening somewhere over here. So there's a lot of ambient coming out this way. It feels like it's a part of the ambient. In the meantime, a uh, help to feel the shadow. Okay, the last example. So this one, I what I did is I put a beauty dish underneath somewhere over here, and then pointing the light up. Uh, why I'm doing this is because um, there's a ambient light uh, coming from somewhere over here, and then they're going down like this way. So then this is a concrete road, and then once the light hit the concrete, it will bounce back. And of course, like we never have enough bounce light, and I mean, maybe when she's sitting on the ground, then they'll be okay. But when she's standing, then it's a different situation. So I basically I just use a beauty dish to uh, enhance the the bounce light effect to make it look like uh, just part of the the ambient light. The other benefit of doing this is you uh, you also will make the catch light on her eye uh, a lot more interesting if we just shoot. Um, natural light, there's probably no catch light on her eye at all. Um, by using a beauty dish to bounce the light back, just add the catch light to her eyes and look to make the image uh, a lot more interesting. Yeah, so this is what I'm trying to show you guys. Just like you um, you use your um, strobe light to mix together with ambient, you always need to make sure it looks like a part of ambient. That's the key thing to make your photo look natural. Okay, now we know that in order to get a natural look, we need to do first, maintain reasonable amount of shadow. Second, maintain the contrast. In the other word, maintain the form. And the third, 
make sure our light coming from an angle that makes sense. Okay, so is that all? Well, also there's another thing you need to pay attention to, which is the last point I want to cover in this video. It's you need to know when to stop. So why exactly we use uh, off-camera flash? It's because the ambient is not perfect. It needs some help. So that's why we use the uh, off-camera flash. But there's sometimes the ambient is just perfect. So when the ambient is perfect, it doesn't need any help. If you give help, you only gonna damage your photo. So how can we find a perfect ambient light? Well, there are many scenarios. Um, oh, let me give you one example, blue hours. You probably know there's some movies filmed exclusively during the blue hours. Well, they do that for a good reason. Blue hours almost always give you very, very good quality ambient light. Just perfect light. You may wonder, oh, wow, I thought it was a overcasting day, cloudy day because the, the light is soft. Well, we don't just need soft light. We need good quality light. What do I mean by good quality light? The light needs to be soft and it needs to be directional. Cloudy day is just like soft light everywhere, very even. So what's going to happen is the image kind of turns a little bit flat. There's kind of lack of a contrast sometimes, right? But blue hours are different. Blue hours is like just before the sunrise or just after the sunset. So you're not going to have the hard sun anymore. So the light is diffused and the magic is only coming from one direction. So when you look at the sky, it's usually one side of the sky is bright, the other side of the sky is dark. So that's a perfect light condition if you shoot just saying 90 degrees from the sunset or sunrise angle then you're gonna have this perfect lighting because you have this like, beautiful gradients from the highlight to the shadow. Just naturally create that contrast for your subject and in the meantime, maintain the shadow and they're a good quality shadow. There are many other things you can do to be creative on your lighting. At the meantime, maintain that natural look. But these three things will give you a good start. The other stuff we'll cover in the future video. Okay, that's all. I'll see you next time.